This right here, this is my wheat. I used the wheat, the whole wheat. Oh. Yep, that's what happens. So I apologize for the low light. Uh, it's not quite sunrise yet. There's a little bit of light peeking through, but the sun hasn't come up over the mountains yet. So it's pretty dark in here. Uh, but this is the fodder tray system that I've got. And uh, basically what it is, is when you have soaked the grain overnight and then you put it in the tray, you put the newest tray at the bottom. There's a little pump that pumps the water via an irrigation hose up to the top. You can see I've got three little nozzles. Now these are uh, variable emitters that I've just removed the cap on so they just constantly spray I think it's like 14 gallons per hour or something like that um, and so we've got our top row is the the row that we're gonna feed that same day so four days ago I did not feed the morning so these are actually one day ahead of this already and you can see this is already getting a little bit too long this normally would be the height that I would be feeding. Um, so at some point in time, I may get that back on track um, if it becomes problematic. But right now, it just looks like it's just a little bit of extra green. Uh, if this were to start turning a very light color and the chlorophyll was being used up, then that would be something that I would try to actually... Uh, get back on track but with my current system uh, I actually have eight days in the tray so there's eight separate trays plus you've got the soak day so um, once you get started then it's every day you're harvesting the top tray and then you would just move every tray up after that so what I do is I start with the the buckets over there and I strain them out and then they have 12 hours in the bucket then they come into the the fodder rack and this is just a bunch of old chain link fence rails and some some lumber that I drilled some holes with a hole saw and uh, nothing real fancy you want to get some heavier duty trays than than just like a, a regular seedling tray um, but what I do is I just put in the first the first day down here and then every day it goes up and up and up and so your top rack is what you're going to be feeding them with so here's our barley I'm sprouting uh, barley in the morning which I only do one tray in the morning I split it between the two uh, herds and then I do two trays of wheat in the evening so each herd gets uh, their own tray but here's here's the bottom of the, of the mat I would say this is a pretty good sprout here there I mean you can see that there's a few that didn't sprout but all in all uh, it's still pretty light if that starts to turn brown or anything um, then you need to make some adjustments just play around with it as I've said in my other videos, don't be afraid to make adjustments, um, especially if you have alternative feed. I was using this as a supplement to start until I really got it kind of dialed in. And um, I still really use this as a supplement. I, even though this is my largest cost factor in feeding my pigs, um, I treat it as a, as a bonus for them. It's just to make sure that they're getting a good base of vitamins and minerals and, and uh, things like that. First group is the boys. See, there's my boar. These are American guinea hogs. Great, great pigs. As far as ease to keep them. You can see they just go straight in there and everybody tears off their chunks so that they don't have to compete. 
you can cut this up. I used to cut this up into um, smaller, I think I used to cut it up into eight, cut one tray up into eight sections and throw it over. Um, yeah, I would say if fighting is a real problem, then maybe you do that. But uh, although there's a little, there's a little competition in my group. For the most part, nobody really, nobody's a danger to each other. Oh, she's got a majority of it there. So again, it just depends on your individual situation. Do what's best for your animals, regardless of what that is. Um, always, always try to improve. Try to find new ways. Oh, somebody went into the shelter over there with their food. Always be looking to improve the quality of of their their housing, their enclosure, their food. So even even though eventually some of these will end up being harvested for meat um, doesn't mean they can't live a, a, an enjoyable life up until their last day that's the goal so now we're back we already fed the, the fodder to the animals what I do now is um, I just spray this out I've got a little brush here used to have uh, like a bleach a bleach solution that I run in there um, to, to try to help disinfect, break down any kind of uh, bacterial growth and things like that. But as long so long as, as you're not getting mold or anything in your in your fodder itself, um, then I found that just a, a good spray down and a little scrape down, and then spray it down again uh, is usually enough to, to keep control over anything that you don't want growing in the in the trays. All right. And then now all we have to do is just uh, get our grain that's drained out of the bucket here and pour it in to the tray. Now for this, there's a lot of people that they'll say you don't want to touch it with your hands or they don't like to touch it with their hands because of oils and stuff like that. If, if that's a concern of yours, by all means wear gloves, but I've never had any adverse. I've done it with gloves just to kind of have a control and I didn't didn't really notice any, any difference in performance. Um, and it sticks to your gloves more so than it sticks to your hands tends to. But once I get it kind of leveled out, just give it a couple bangs so that it's nice and even. And that is a tray that's ready to go into the bottom of the rack. So now, now that we've got our, our mortaring tray draining, I actually do two trays for the evening feeding. So I'm going to go ahead and fill those up with grain and get some water in there and get those start soaking. Now I use whole wheat. I prefer whole barley, um, but the whole barley that I buy from my local feed store actually does not sprout well in this system. Uh, for wheat, I end up using about five cups. So it's just this little cheapy, is a four and a half cup measure to that top line. But then I fill it all the way up to the very, very top, which I estimate is about five cups. So we're just looking at getting two full pitchers in there. And so that's gonna be five cups per tray. If I was using barley, I would actually do uh, seven cups. I th think is what I found is the sweet spot. I've done six, I've done eight, and uh, you can try both of those. But where I am, the conditions that I have, it gets very, very hot and it gets very cold. 
depending on the season. Right now we're coming we're starting to come into this to the cold season. Uh, it was 40, 44 degrees this morning when I came outside. Um, and where I've got the, the fodder system is actually indoors, but it's not in a climate regulated environment. So um, the wheat seems to do just fine in that environment. But again, uh, barley is preferable. And I do have a barley product that I used last winter, um, but it's a bagged product. It's right here. And so this is what I'm actually using right now in the morning. This is left over from last fall or last winter. And uh, I've got about a half a bag, so 25 pounds. So that'll probably take me, I don't know, two weeks to go through doing one tray at a time. Um, maybe a little bit less, but just use, use whatever is convenient for your environment. What, what works for me may not work for you due to temperature, due to any number of things, due to the seed quality that you get um like i said i've i've gotten I, I got that barley that's in a bag and it's last season's barley it shows on there that it was bagged in july and it works fine now but this next year's crop from the same brand same everything may not have the same germination rate so you need to be constantly monitoring that if you ever switch sources um I would always do a test prior to running out of your of your previous source and make sure that it's actually going to do just do a one tray test and see that make sure that it's actually going to germinate as well or better if it does better then switch as soon as you can and I would keep a little bit of the previous source just as a as a backup um, which is why I still have some leftover of the barley in the bag but um, the reason I switched to the wheat is I found a source on the wheat that's about half the price uh, as the bag barley and I tried the whole barley first from that feed store that sells bulk feed and it just did not... Ow, get down. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Crazy cat. It just didn't have uh, didn't have the performance. It was not even half of the not even half of the uh, seeds were germinating. So even though I was saving money on the actual feed, what my end result was was not um, not productive enough to offset the cost. So um, I switched to wheat throughout the summertime. Wheat was awesome. And now that it's cooling down, I, I've noticed that uh, there's been slightly different performance in the wheat, which isn't necessarily bad. It doesn't grow as tall as fast, but it seems like the germination rate is actually higher. So there's less of the uh, unsprouted seeds at the bottom of the tray. Um, ideally, you'd have 100% germination, but I'll go ahead and tell you that that's probably not gonna happen. Um, unless you're using actual seed quality um, grain, which is much, much more expensive. So you have to kind of do that analysis on your own. And if you want to do organic or something like that, it's probably going to be seed quality anyway, um, but it's going to cost you anywhere between three and five times probably of what, uh, what a bulk stuff is going to cost. In my area here, I get uh, I get barley bulk barley for 13 cents a pound, um, minimum of 100 pounds. So what I do is I just I fill up that barrel. When that barrel is full, it's about 300 pounds of grain. So that works perfect for me. I usually only fill it about halfway up. Otherwise, it starts to become too cumbersome with unloading it by myself. So um, again. If you have a tractor or something like that, you can throw a sling on a barrel like that, unload it no problem, but uh, not what I have. 
So that's pretty much the basics of the fodder system. Uh, as I said, I, I soak my bucket or my grain in a bucket for roughly 12 hours. It seems to be that even an eight hour soak is sufficient to get the germination started. And I actually was running into in the summertime when it was really warm here. And I say warm, it was over a hundred degrees and on some days. It seemed like my grain started to ferment in the trays. So it was, it was breaking down too fast. So that's actually what got me started on a slower soak. And from there, it was convenient to run uh, multiple trays anyway so it just kind of naturally fed into and in that way i don't have to have a bunch of extra buckets laying around and keeping track of which one was the which one's at 12 hours which one's at 24. yeah the animals love it you can use this for chickens goats uh, obviously pigs i'm using it for um, horses cows whatever you want to give whatever normally eats grass or vegetation you can try to keep it as a, as a, a large uh, percentage of their diet if you can produce that much or just keep it as a treat. Um, they love it. There's, I feed, I feed produce and things like that to my, to my pigs. And unless they're getting apples at the moment, then they hop right on the fodder. It doesn't matter how much they've eaten already. Um, they love the taste of it. It seems like barley is a little bit more palatable to them. Um, when I first when I first switched over here, it's been about I don't know, five minutes or so, and they've already cleaned it all up. Um, but when I first switched it over from barley to wheat, they were a little snobby about the wheat. Um, I also had fewer, fewer animals in here, so I've had some, had some litters since then, and, uh, uh, competition breeds appetite, or what the situation is, but nobody really seems to, to check anymore, they just jump, as soon as it hits the ground, they're, they're all over it, so, um, once, once you get it started, um, uh, it's just pretty much, you know, move the trays up and you just get as many trays as you feel like you need.